HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. Climate change and its impact on the global environment makes news around the world today. Good evening, everyone. I'm Keisha Latterly. And I'm Chris Saunders. Thank you so much for joining us. Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Perry Christie, pitched the Bahamas' position on climate change to the world as he addressed over 100 world leaders at the United Nations Climate Change Summit in Paris today. Mr. Christie mints no words as he called for global action to climate change and international support for the Bahamas. Now, the Prime Minister joined world leaders, including U.S. President Barack Obama and China's President Xi Jinping, in a call for a united effort and quick action. Clint Watson is in Paris with the details. For many countries, it's a means to finding a more Earth-friendly way of living or greater efficiency. But for the Bahamas, it's a matter of survival. The world is talking about climate change and ways to address the global issue. At the mega United Nations Climate Change Summit in Paris, 150 leaders from around the world, inclusive of the U.S., Russian and China presidents, and the German chancellor have all committed to financing the solution to a problem they admitted to creating. The Bahamas is one of the lowest emitters contributing to this international problem, but continues to be impacted by climate change. Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie, during his time on the floor, was clear of his position that the Bahamas needs access funding as a matter of urgency. Indeed, with 80% of our land within one meter or five feet of mean sea level, business as usual with regard to climate change threatens the very existence of the Bahamas as we know it. Mr. President, after experiencing Hurricane Joaquin just last month, where the sea rose and took weeks to recede, it is beyond doubt to us the issue we face with the rise of the sea level. It threatens our very existence. Recognizing that mitigation alone will not protect us, we have made concerted efforts to adapt to the adverse effects of climate change. We have strengthened building codes, built new coastal defenses, and moved to relocate vulnerable communities all through use of our own national resources. Mr. Christie further outlined that the Bahamas faces mounting international pressure to comply, but will need the assistance of the United Nations to achieve as he offered this advice to the body. Mr. President, we must adopt at the end of next week an international legally binding agreement under the Convention that is in the form of a protocol and is applicable to all parties. We must also agree a long-term goal of keeping the average global temperature rise below 1.5 degrees Celsius. The two degrees goal which many espouse will lead to the loss of entire countries. And a 1.5 degree goal is not only desirable, it is achievable and feasible. Let us then send a clear message to the world that we will fight for countries like the Bahamas to stay on the map into the next century. Mr. Christie further called for the Paris Agreement to include loss and damage, as well as for those who have made pledges to honor them. Existing insurance structures are inadequate and often rely on legalisms which deny legitimate claims. Secondly, we must recognize the $100 billion per year pledge by developed countries and that it needs to be honored and built upon in the post-2020 period. As I conclude, Mr. President, the Bahamas should be able to access these funds. We deplore the continued use of gross domestic product, gross national income per capita, as the main component in determining the access that the Bahamas and other small island development states have to financial resources for our adaptation needs. 
The concern is so many times that these United Nations sponsored events, countries sign agreements and make commitments without ever following up and actually implementing an action plan. Well, countries like the Bahamas hope that doesn't happen in something so important as climate change. They're hoping that real action follows this meeting. In Paris, Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. Training for officers at the Department of Corrections is in the pipeline as the facility continues its transition from punitive to corrective. Commissioner of Corrections Patrick Wright said yesterday at the Corrections Services Recognition Week worship service at Bahamas Faith Ministries International that he has instructed a team from Human Resources to get the educational program started. Minister of National Security, the Honorable Dr. Bernard Nottage, told officers that they must upgrade their skills if they want to be promoted. Promoted. He cannot cause you to move forward. You have to do that yourself. He said something else. He said the qualifications, or oh, I understood him to say that he'll be sure that all of you are qualified to go to the next step. You have to have the qualifications to be familiar in these days. All I go and I plead about how good you are, how you come to work on town, how you be, you understand? But if you don't have certain things, it's not going to happen. Now, Minister Nottage also encouraged the officers to stay away from engaging in any alleged corruption at the correction facility. Officers, come on. A situation that exists in the prison where inmates can be in possession of drugs, where inmates can be in possession of cellular telephones, corresponding with people on the outside, and promoting crime from inside the prison. The ninth annual Comprehensive Disaster Management Conference opened this morning here in Nassau, and it's the first time the conference is taking place in this country. 18 members of the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, or SEDEMA, are participating in the conference that will take a retrospective look at the organization's effectiveness since its establishment in 2001 and map the way forward. Minister of State in the Ministry of Works and Urban Development, the Honorable Arnold Forbes, opened the event and says the Bahamas is one of the more vulnerable countries in the region. We are constantly reminded that the Bahamas and other countries in our region are located in one of the most vulnerable areas in the world. The risk we face threatened our fragile economies and demands that we have in place sound disaster risk management systems. The Bahamas, a multi-island state, as well as several other multi-island states in the region, are also faced with the challenges associated with building redundancies and resources. We nevertheless have to remain resolute in our efforts to build disaster resilient states. Our priorities at this time are focused on mapping the mapping of vulnerable areas and on community preparedness. We are seeking to build capacity in the islands and to bring communities to a point where they can respond in the immediate aftermath of events. The conference is coincidentally taking place on the last day of the 2015 hurricane season and as world leaders meet in Paris for a climate change summit. Former Prime Minister of Jamaica, the Most Honorable P.J. Patterson, noted the benefits of working together as a team as the impact of climate change is non-discriminatory. It is in this context I dare to suggest the broadening of your outreach for the 10th conference to include possibly as associates in the first instance all nations which are part of the geographic Caribbean space. 
Guadeloupe, Martinique, Curacao, St. Martin, Cuba, the Dominican Republic, and Puerto Rico as well. For natural disasters, when they come, do not seem to respect national borders. They spread their fury to all, regardless of the flags. <laughs> 